I squail I quinacilum nama and the pa quasaltinat to need sanat sinalo. Hello everybody, it's so good to see you all. My traditional name is Quisaltanat. I'm from Snanamo First Nation. Uh, my English name is Michelle. Thanks for joining me today. We're gonna make a drum. Uh, I'm gonna make a 12 inch drum. It's gonna look a lot like this. Uh, but I believe for your class, you're gonna make a 14 inch drum. Uh, your hide is an elk hide uh, and they have such beautiful color. I can't wait for you to see your drum. Um, and your drum rim is made out of red cedar. All right, here we go. One of the most important parts about drum making is making sure that you start in the right frame of mind. So I want you to think about the whole time as you are making your drum that all of the positive energy, all of the good stuff um, all of the love that you have, you're putting that into your drum because that's going to come out of your drum when you play it. If at any point while you're making your drum you feel stressed, take a little break, have a little dance party, and then come back to it. We have about one hour to make your drum from start to finish before that hide starts to dry. So get yourself into a good mood and let's get ready to make your drum. When, when your drum comes out of the water, you're gonna very lightly um, take some of the moisture off of it. You're just gonna use a towel or some paper towels and just pat it. Then you're gonna figure out which side is the beautiful side. And for some hides, that's really difficult. And for some, that's a really easy thing to find out. So you're gonna look and you're gonna see which one kind of looks rough, which side has some imperfections. And that's usually, what I call the ugly side, the beautiful side, if you look really close, it, you, sometimes you can see the hair follicles. Um, so you're gonna find the beautiful side and you're gonna put the beautiful side down onto your table. Then you're gonna take your drum rim and you're gonna center your drum rim. So you're gonna find the double set of holes on the very bottom and you're gonna make sure that those align with a flat piece. So see how that's right in the middle? And that's what I want. And then you're gonna go around it and just double check that it's exactly in the middle. Next, you're gonna get your sinew out and you're gonna open it all up and you're gonna put the purple darning needle that I gave you onto the sinew. You are gonna just let it overhang. You're not gonna tie it on and you're gonna put that on the side that does not have a loop on it. So you can see this side has a loop this side doesn't, we put the needle on. We're gonna drop the loop side to the ground. It's all gonna be opened up. And we're gonna take the needle and we're gonna take, we're gonna go through the top side down. And so we're gonna scoop right through. So we're gonna go right through, go from one to the next, and then you're gonna pull, pull, pull until the loop is right here. Once you pull, pull, pulled, and your loop is all the way right at this, the edge of the hole, you're gonna put your needle through that loop and pull, pull, pull to tie you onto your hide. I'm officially tied right onto my hide, and so from this point, I have to figure out the direct north across from, this is what we call the south. This is our starting place. It's the south, it's close to us. I'm gonna find the north. And how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna take my hands and I'm gonna put my fingers on two groups at a time. So with my other hand, which I can't do because I'm videotaping this, I'm just gonna go two, 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 all the way until I find the one that doesn't have a partner. So I found the one that doesn't have a partner in the north. I've readjusted where my rim is so that it's exactly in the middle as best I can and I'm gonna feed through the top side down. So I'm gonna go through the right hole, scoop it straight out through the left hole. We don't wanna go through and then back in and then in two different steps. It's gonna go through one scoop and we're just gonna pull, pull, pull until that's sort of tight. As I pulled that through, I held with one hand and I used the other hand to pull the sinew through. 
So the next piece is we're going to feed that needle always underneath. So he's going to dip underneath the line and he's going to come over to the right side to the hole that's closest to the line. So here's the line and on the bottom, it's going to go through the left hole and scoop straight out the right hole. So I've pulled that sinew through those two holes and now I'm ready to use my purple darning needle and I'm going to go underneath the two lines to the top to the left of the north lines. So we're going to feed through the hole that's closest to the line which is the right hole and we're going to scoop it through those two holes and then we're going to pull pull pull. So you can see I'm ready to pull, pull, pull. I've done one scooping motion through the two holes and I'm going to pull, pull, pull it. I've pull, pull, pulled it and now I'm ready to go back under my lines and I'm going to the right of the south line and I'm going to go through the hole that's closest to the line. So I'm going to scoop in through the left and out through the right. So it's scooped in one motion and then I'm going to hold my frame with one hand and I'm going to pull, pull, pull that sinew through with the other hand. It's all the way pulled through so I'm going to dip back underneath my line. I'm going to the left of the north line and I'm going to go to the hole that's closest to the line and I'm going to scoop in through the right hole and out through the left hole in one motion and I'm going to pull, pull, pull. So once I get to the top, I'm going to go back underneath here and go through the hole that's closest to the line and just continue to zigzag to the left on the top, to the right on the bottom. And we're always going through that hole that's closest to the line. So on the top, that's the right hole through to the left. On the bottom, that's the left hole and straight out the right, always dipping under and back as you go. So I've zigzagged across and back, across and back, across and back until the very last set of holes and I should be ending right next to my south. So at the hole that's closest to the south, I should be just ending. And now I'm gonna pull, pull, pull that last hole and I'm just gonna let my sinew with my needle kind of drop on the floor after I've gone through that last one and we're gonna do some tightening. Okay, so I've finished lacing it up to begin with, and I'm just letting the sinew hang off of the table with the needle on it just to the floor. And I'm going to make sure that the center again is close to my body. And what I'm going to do is with one hand, I'm going to, so it's a little bit hard for me to show you on here, but I'm gonna hold it with the one hand. And then with my right hand, I'm gonna take out the slack. So I'm gonna follow this with my right hand as I hold this part with my left, okay? And so I'm gonna follow that and I'm gonna just pull on in the same direction that I sewed it and I'm gonna take out the slack. So it's gonna go under and across and we're just gonna go in that same direction. If at any point you get lost and you're trying to figure out where, which direction you're going, just go back to the south and follow the line. So I'm trying to do this one-handed to show you, but you're gonna hold the frame with one hand as you pull the slack out. So this first time, you can see that I'm not heaving on it. I'm just taking out the slack so it's a little tighter. The next time around, I'm gonna pull it a little tighter. So I'm gonna continue following that all the way around, tightening it up just a little bit, taking out some of the slack. I've gone all the way around and I've taken out some of the slack. And if I touch it gently, I can feel that it's starting to get a little bit more solid. If yours isn't getting a little more solid, then the next time around it will. So this next time I'm gonna do the same thing, except I'm going to pull it just a little bit tighter. So again, I'm gonna start from the south. That's the place where we tied on. And I'm gonna pull it a little bit tighter. I'm gonna be firm. I'm going to pull it kind of slowly so that I can feel any movement in the elk hide. 
If you feel like the elk hide is stretching too much, then just be careful on this rope, this part. But your elk hide will stretch out a little bit. So one of the ways that I check to see if it's done yet is by looking at the hide. And I can see on the edge, it's not stretched out much at all. And it's really not that firm yet. So I'm gonna go around one time and just tighten it up just a little bit more. I've gone around again and as you can see it's starting to look a little bit tighter on the edges it's starting to stretch just a little bit it's getting a lot firmer um, I'm not pushing too hard when I check it I'm just checking to see that it's nice and tight um, so I'm gonna go around another time and see if I can't get just a little bit more um, slack out of it so I've gone around two more times and every time I go around I start from my south line and I follow it and I take out as much slack as I can and it's very solid now. When I look at the sides they're stretching, they're nice and tight um, and I feel like after going around four times mine I've taken out all the slack that I can. Uh, so yours might be four times it might be only two times, it might be five times, but the goal is to get to the point where there's no slack. And when I look at these guys, the pairs of sinew, the pairs of sinew are quite close together. Okay, if they're not, you're gonna kind of pull them close together. Okay, so I'm gonna end right there and then I'm gonna show you how to make the handle. So I'm ready to make my handle and I've picked up my purple darning needle off of the ground and I'm going to count from the south. I'm going to count eight, including the south. So I'm going to start with the south and I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so I'm going to go under and I'm going to put it in between those eight. So I've gone around in that same spot again. So from here to here, so to the left of south and in between the, the eighth piece of sinew and I've pulled it tight and you can see it's kind of made the handle to be right in the middle. Now I'm going to count from the south one, two, three, four and I'm going to put it under that four and through there. Okay, we're going to break these into groups of four. That's what we're doing here. So I've gone through the group of four and then I want to count to the four to the left of south. So one, two, three, four. And we're going to go under that and so you're going to go we're breaking it into quadrants here and we're going to go across that and that creates the basis for our handle and also just secures it in the middle so then i'm going to pull it and that's broken us into groups of four so there's four eight twelve sixteen lines so now I'm going to start to wrap the groups of four. So starting in the south, one, two, three, four. I'm going to go underneath that group of four and I'm going to pull, pull, pull. Okay. And I'm going to just loop around it. So after I've gone around, I'm going to kind of pull it up and down and that pulls it tight. Then I'm going to do the same thing again. So I'm going to do that eight times. So at this point, I've gone around eight times and every time pulled it up and towards the edge, which kind of has kept it nice and tight as I've gone down. On the last time, you can see that I've got a loop here. That was the eighth time. And I'm gonna go through this loop with the needle. That'll create a half hitch knot and that'll secure the bottom of this part of the handle. So you can see I went through that loop and now I've got a bit of a half hitch knot here and I'm going to pull it nice and tight, which it is. And I'm gonna go over to the next group of four. One, two, three, four. And I'm gonna go under that next group of four. And that first one, I don't consider to be one of my eight. It's just putting it into the right place. So now I've gone under and I'm gonna wrap around that next group of four eight times. And on the eighth time, I'm going to go through the loop to create that half hitch knot. So I've wrapped around it eight times and on the eighth time I've gone through the loop and I've created a half hitch knot which will secure us on. So then I'm going to go under the next group of four and do the same thing, 
go under it and then wrap it eight times. On the eighth time, you're gonna go through that half hitch knot or through the loop to create a half hitch knot. Okay, so I've wrapped around the four groups of two pieces of sinew eight times. I've gone through the loop, so I'm secured with a little knot and I'm gonna do the same thing one last time. So you're gonna go under the group of four. You're gonna wrap those four groups of two eight times. And on the last time, you're gonna do a half hitch knot. Okay, so I've gone around the last group of four eight times, and on the eighth time, I've done the half hitch knot. And I like to just play it safe and make sure that I have enough half hitch knots that it's not gonna come out. So I do, I will wrap it four more times and go through the loop four times. So creating four half hitch knots just to finish it off. So you can see that I've gone through and I'm gonna go through that loop. So that's once, I'm gonna pull it nice and tight. Okay, it's pulled tight. I'm gonna go underneath that group of four again to create one of those loops. I'm gonna go through that loop. I'm gonna pull that tight. That's twice. I'm gonna go under those group of four to create the loop. I'm gonna go under through the loop. And finally, one last time through the loop. That's four half hitch knots. That should keep us nice and secure. And then I might just go around this group of two and do the same thing. So I'm gonna go under it and I'm gonna go in front of that one going through the loop. So I think I'll do that four times. So I'm gonna go under and through the loop I create. And that's twice, that's creating another little half hitch knot. So I'm just gonna go under and through that loop that I created. That's three. And one last time, because in our Coast Salish culture, we try to do everything that we can in groups of four. So that's it. You're going to cut that piece of sinew off. You can flip your drum over. You're gonna let your drum dry for at least 24 hours, and it needs to be propped up on its side. You might wanna rotate it a few times. In a couple hours, that'll let the bottom dry and each of the sides dry. And you're gonna refrain from pushing on it. So I know you might wanna hit it with a drumstick, but you're not gonna do that because it can stretch it just a little bit.